today's video shows you how I custom t-shirts at home. Six different ways and any design of your choice. I love to create DIY custom t-shirts and I know you will too. Be sure to watch till the end so that you see all six t-shirt design methods. And I use nothing fancy, you can create these t-shirts using quite basic materials. Of course, let me know in the comments below which is your favourite and I know you're going to enjoy designing and printing your t-shirts as much as I do. For our first t-shirt, we're using this wonderful paper, freezer paper. I'll link it in the description below if you've not used it before. The freezer paper is shiny on one side and matte on the other. I like to use this method for one-off t-shirt designs. You will also need some sort of fabric paint and I have this SD block printing ink. Out of the freezer paper I've cut a really basic rainbow shape and a little heart. I like the simple basic shapes with this technique. Position your freezer paper shiny side down onto your t-shirt and then you can iron it gently into place. The freezer paper sticks really well and just to give a bit of stability while we put the ink on I've got a large embroidery hoop that I've placed on like this. And now take a piece of cardboard and put it inside the t-shirt so that the ink doesn't bleed through to the other side. I'm adding a rainbow of colours but you can add just one colour if you wish. These are block printing inks but you can use any fabric paint that you have. The link for this one is in the description below and then very simply I have an old credit card here and I'm simply putting some even pressure down through the card and blending the colours around the rainbow shape. Just to blend the colours in I'm going to go over and over this to get the blended effect but if you're doing the one colour just ensure you've got an even film of ink right across the section in between the freezer paper. I really love this single use method and it's really exciting to see, once it's all dry, how it turns out. The possibility of all the different t-shirt designs are absolutely endless with this method. So it's really fun to have an experiment and play and get the kids involved too. Let the ink completely dry, then we can remove the hoop and the cardboard and then peel back all of the freezer paper to reveal our design. This SD fabric ink is heat set, so all we need to do is now that it's fully dry, we can iron it and that sets the ink and it means we can put it in the washing machine and it's good to go. I absolutely love how it's turned out, there's so many possibilities, so please do go and enjoy and have some fun with this really quick and easy t-shirt printing technique. So easy to do at home. Another t-shirt design technique you should really try is bleach spray. You want a 100% cotton t-shirt, like for most of these projects, 100% cotton t-shirts work great. And I've used freezer paper just like in the first t-shirt project, and I have ironed that in place like I did before. I simply traced out this little plane and cut it out with some scissors. And now I've got some bleach in a bottle that is one part bleach to one part water. I'm just using an old kitchen spray bottle. It's best to do this technique outside with some gloves on and a mask. Again, there's a piece of cardboard in between the t-shirt and the t-shirt back so that we don't get any bleed through onto the other side of the t-shirt. Taking the tissue to dab off any excess solution. The first time you do this, try less is more because you don't want any of that bleach solution to soak through the paper. I perhaps add in a little bit much, just don't expect the bleach to work straight away. Once it's dry, you will see the effects of the bleach on your t-shirt. I'm just speeding up the drying process with the hairdryer and then we can wash the bleach out a bit quicker that way. And as you see it drying, you can really see the effect of the bleach on the t-shirt. As I say, I added a little bit too much bleach, so go a little bit lighter with the bleach than I did. Once it's fully dry, you can peel off your freezer paint. On this occasion, as I was a bit heavy handed with the bleach, I'm just going to take some of my white printing ink and I'm just going to go over with this ink and add a little more definition. 
Less bleach and you will get a crisper edge, but it just shows if you make a mistake we can try and correct it somehow. On this fabric here I'm just going a little bit lighter with the bleach to show you that you do get a nice crisp edge. It's a really cheap technique to try and a great one for at home for just a bit of fun so please do experiment and have a go. So even though I added a little bit too much bleach I could correct that and just add a bit of ink and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Another craft I really love is block printing and of course you can block print onto t-shirts too. With this technique you can do much more intricate designs and you can print your t-shirt and your design again and again. I'm going to cut my block out of lino and I'll link in the description below all these basic materials that you can find. Once you have these craft items the possibilities really are endless and it really is a lot of fun. I've designed this polar bear and I've simply drawn it out on paper in pencil. If you put the pencil side down and rub all over, the design transfers. I'm using this SD lino cutter from the stamp carving kit and you simply want to just cut out all of your design. I have some more videos on my channel about block printing so if you want to find out in more detail how to do this please do go and check out some of those videos. But the process is really a lot of fun and you're left with a stamp that you can stamp on anything you wish. As the blades are sharp just be sure to cut away from yourself and if you're in doubt use one of the guards that I showed you just before. You can add lots of little details in and just enjoy the process. And of course you can begin with something a lot more basic. I then cut around the whole polar bear with my scissors so that I'm left with my block print for my t-shirt design. Before you go printing onto your t-shirt, take a ink pad, ink the lino up and test it on a piece of paper. This way you can take a look at the design and see how it prints and then take out any extra little bits and neaten it up. There are many kits available to do this. This one's actually meant for printing t-shirts and things, so that's a good one to choose. What we need next is some fabric paint or fabric ink and your t-shirt and a roller. Take the colour ink of your choice. I like to mix them to get a nice unique colour. You can add your ink to any smooth surface, a piece of glass, plastic or a tile. Iron your t-shirt free of creases and put something inside so that the ink doesn't go through to the other side. Then we need to load our roller or brayer with some ink. You can tell it's got enough ink on when it makes a nice squeaky sound. If you want more details on how to do this, as I say, I have more videos showing a bit more depth how to block print. As you see here, we just ink up the block by rolling the roller or brayer over the top. We then go in with another coat to ensure we have enough ink to transfer to the t-shirt. Once the block is fully inked, we can move it over to the t-shirt, turn it over, and we want to rub that all over and leave it for just a moment for the ink to soak into the t-shirt and then peel it off. And again with this ink, if we iron it, it's set and heat set so that it's able to go in the washing machine. Here I'm showing you on a smooth cotton fabric how the ink does sink in a little better than on t-shirt fabrics. So just make sure you practice and experiment before you put it on anything special so you know how the ink is going to behave on that certain fabric. I love to reuse and recycle items and so that's what I'm doing for this next t-shirt project. I have these t-shirts that my son has outgrown but I love these badges on them so I'm simply just going to take my snips and cut them out. Depending on how they're attached to the t-shirt you can cut them around the edge or with this one I'm going to cut a border and then tuck, tuck the edge in as I sew it on. I will then repurpose the rest of the t-shirt into something else. So there I have my badges ready to sew onto a t-shirt for me. To add more design to the t-shirt I'm taking the freezer paper method. I printed out the numbers on the computer and then I traced them onto my freezer paper. 
ironing it in place so that I can add some ink and this time I'm just going to use the roller and roll the ink over like we did in the last project. But directly onto the fabric. If you don't have a roller for this you can simply use a little sponge and very gently and lightly dab this through the freezer paper. I just love that we can bespoke and personalise our t-shirts in this way. And it's really quite satisfying to get such great results really quick. I'm taking some grease through paper and I've ironed that down to set it and now I'm simply, I've pinned my badges into place, just choose where you want them and I'm simply doing a running stitch right around the edges of the badges. With this one just tucking the excess in as I go around, sewing around the edge of this one in a matching thread. And I really love how this one's turned out and it's made a plain t-shirt really quite lovely and unique. Another effective and really affordable way to make a t-shirt is to add some embroidery. Inspired by another of my t-shirts, I've done a little design with a sausage dog on it. I have my embroidery hoops and my t-shirt. Because the t-shirt has some stretch on it, we want to stabilise this and so I have some soak away stabiliser here. I'm tracing the design onto the stabiliser using a heat soluble pen and then this stabiliser will actually soak away in water at the end. It's a good idea to stabilise it with something like this so that you get nice neat stitches. Position the design in place where you want it and then take an embroidery hoop and simply place it on like this. As you saw before I have much larger ones so you could use larger ones if your design is larger and you want to not stretch the fabric but just keep it taut and in position. Choose some colours of embroidery floss. The floss contains six strands, I like to split this in half and use it in strands of three. To keep it really simple I'm just using a back stitch for the whole of this really simple design but there are so many embroidery stitches you can really have some fun with this. Insert the needle from behind and start your back stitch. Leave a little tail hanging out at the back and as we do each stitch we're going to catch this instead of having a knot so we need to make sure we keep catching the back of that into our stitches so that it effectively ties it off for us. Looping it in as we go. You see that tail can go through the loop and it secures it down in place and if we keep doing that for quite a few stitches it will secure it. If you do struggle with that just do a knot but um, we try and avoid the knot so that it's not rubbing against our skin. So this is just a simple back stitch. You just keep pulling up and going backwards, pull the needle up ahead of you and then going backwards. You could also embroider somebody's name on the front of a t-shirt like this as well. This method just takes a little bit longer than some of the others but it's quite therapeutic if you sit down and maybe enjoy listening to something while you do it. And of course you can put it down and pick it up from where you left off the next day. When you've used up your first strand of thread, you can pull it through the back and then do a series of loops around your stitches just like this. Push it under your stitches and then in the same direction again, we can push it through and then this ties our, um, our end off. And then once you pick up another colour or if you need to do some more of the black, then you just do as we did at the beginning. For the turquoise thread here I'm using the six strands of thread and that just gives a nice contrast. If you've got some details in there it's nice to change the line thickness and vary things a little bit. So there we have a nice simple line design. You could do something quite a lot more elaborate like I did this hummingbird on this backpack and I embroidered all of that on as well. Next I removed the embroidery hoop and cut off the excess of the stabiliser and then it's ready to soak and remove the rest of this stabiliser. You simply take it to a bowl of water, 
and let it dissolve. Once it's dissolved, you can let it dry. It's really quite magic and I love doing this bit as it just disappears and leaves our beautiful embroidery. I've just let it drip dry and I'm really happy with how it's turned out. The alternative to the soak away stabiliser is one that you would put behind your t-shirt and you would leave it there permanently. Printing onto heat transfer paper is another great way to make t-shirts. You will need to reverse your design on your application and then we need to print this out. And we print this out onto some special heat transfer paper for t-shirts. This I think works best on white t-shirts and I'll put a link in the description below for the transfer paper. It tends to come with logos on one side and you want to print onto the blank side. This is a good method for t-shirts that you might want to wear to an event that you don't want to wear too many times. I've printed the design just quickly onto some paper and I'm just going to test and position, make sure I've got it correct and here it is to see how I want it and then I've printed it out on the heat transfer paper. I like to cut it one or two millimetres around the edge and I like to give a nice border around it all because you do see a slight sheen on all of what you print so you don't want to have a big border on it. Place it print side down onto your t-shirt and position it where you would like it and then you can take it to the ironing board and we simply can first of all dab it in place just to make sure we hold it where we want it and then read the instructions it normally says maybe for 30 seconds you need to make sure the heat is there. This one changes colour and that colour change tells us when it's ready. Just make sure you've put enough heat over the whole design. Once the t-shirt and the paper is cooled down you can simply peel off the backing paper to reveal your design. This method can be washed in the washing machine but with time it does fade. So it's a better method for when you need the t-shirt for fewer uses. I'm really thrilled with how this one's turned out and I love all of the t-shirts that I've made but my absolute favourite I think has to be the rainbow one so please let me know in the comments below which you prefer or if you've got any other ideas and other tips and tricks we'd love to hear. Thank you for watching and come and see some more of my videos. Bye for now.